Hello and welcome to First Friday Review. We have an exciting November show for you. Starring Karen Cook D'Amico, Ada Stallman, Susan Snyder, Samuel C. Guy, and Peggy Jennings. But first, let's stop into a new yoga studio on Clinton Street called Bikram Yoga. What's the general range of clientele who comes in from Binghamton to do yoga? Um, all ranges of people. Perfect. What's the youngest student that you have? Um, from 10 years old to 85 years old, I'd say. Never too old to start practicing yoga. And how long do the sessions last when you are instructing multiple people? Uh, they're all 90 minutes. 90 minutes long, and yeah. that does that begin with breathing exercises? Or? Yeah, it begins and ends with breathing exercises, and they're all 26 mm -hmm. postures. It's a set of 26, they're all the same. Hey, Ewan. Yeah. Hey, um, yeah. I'm looking Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to First Friday in downtown Binghamton. I'm Lynn with Dancing Wire Wraps. I'm here at Imagica showing off my wire wrap jewelry and trees of life. I wrap seashells and, um, and beach glass from Lake Erie and play with any kind of wire wrapped objects. Come on down and check us out. Everyone's really nice. I've been coming here for years, um, many, many good um, venues here, art walk wise, and many, many good um, quality stuff here that we love to buy and check it out every month. Um, it always is changing, so there's always a, something new to see. Amazing venue. I hope they're here for many years. Okay. Okay, yeah. How is it? Hi, my name is David Hansis, and I'm the manager at Five Riverside Towers here in Binghamton, New York. We're a housing cooperative right by the uh, Susquehanna and Shenango Rivers, and we'd like to welcome you to our first Friday gallery opening for this month. Thank you. Hi, I'm really um, privileged to have this space as a gallery and to show the really terrific numbers of artists who are here. And um, it's just my pleasure. And I know the artists have often sent me emails or told me that it's a privilege for them to show their work here. It's a beautiful space, and um, I love doing it. Yes, thank you. So do you enjoy living here? Oh, yes. Oh yes, we lost our house in the flood in 06, and we were lucky enough to find a place here with the most wonderful view of what I call the castle roof of the Kilmer Mansion next door. Oh yes. We're on the eighth floor, and it's absolutely wonderful. Um, this is my first experience in apartment living, and um, I wasn't sure I would like it, but it is absolutely wonderful it's a community it's active there's always something going on and we have the best people here um, incidental accidental um, they asked me to help them sort of refurbish the lobby the upholstery and i looked around and the walls were bare and i said we need some paintings here and started off very small um, maybe five or six paintings, and it's just grown and grown to the point where when we're between shows, there's a few days when one show is taken down, the other show is put up, 
People say, oh, the walls look so bare. <laughs> no, this is our first, our first uh, work, um, three-dimensional work, and I had no idea how it was going to work out because we're used to having the walls really covered with paintings, you know, filled with paintings. But Karen Domega, who's our artist, our featured artist, is not only a really gifted sculptor and artist, but she's very professional. And we've just had a lot of fun displaying this work. Oh, yes, actually, each artist shows um, his or her work for two months. And uh, we're open 24-7, literally. We have front desk security. So people stop here if they can't make it to First Friday. They can stop here anytime. And there's always informed people who can tell them, show them around, invite them to see the work. It's um, a great advantage to the exhibiting artists because they get a really wide audience this way. is Karen Cuff D'Amico and I am the current artist showing my work at um, the gallery at Riverside Towers on 5 Riverside Drive in Binghamton. Um, our show will be up until well basically the end of the year so feel free to come by and see it anytime you want. I work in clay, I make sculptures um, although I've been doing a little bit of painting and encaustics lately but primarily I work with clay and I work with Trying, the title of the show is called Conversations. So I, I work with trying to get apart across stories, and um, hopefully people will be able to relate to my work. So anyway, you're welcome to come. Thank you very much. <laughs> Milk of pie, which is quite different. 
rock hard off bottom. Can't break it. And then this one is a oat chocolate pie. Mm -hmm. I saw a uh, really salted good. honey pie. I know. I'm going back for that. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to First Friday, Binghamton. I'll try it again. <laughs> All right. Welcome to First Friday, Binghamton. Are you? Yes. Okay. Welcome to First Friday, Binghamton at River Reed Bookstore. And we have the opening of Susan Snyder, abstract expressionist artist from New York City and also my mother-in-law. Uh, tonight's her opening. And uh, I'm inspired by her work through its color, through its texture, it's layers, it's all over my house, and now it's all over River Reed. Um, her artwork is big, it's bold, it's exciting. Uh, she has had uh, several shows in New York City and in different areas, and uh, we're, we've, this is her fourth show in Binghamton, is that right? And uh, we, uh, we're really excited to share this wonderful work with um, folks who are watching the review here, the first uh, Friday review. Um, would you like to say anything about your work, Susan? Oh, no, this is just the culmination of years of painting. I'm an abstract expressionist, primarily a colorist. Um, as Thomas has said, I had a few solo shows in New York City as well as Binghamton, and I've been in many group shows several group shows throughout the country. And I'm happy to be here tonight. This is about my fourth uh, exhibit in Binghamton, and it's a great place to exhibit. I think that it's really wonderful that Binghamton is such a small city, and yet we have such a vibrant art scene. Uh, we're thankful for the support from River Reed Bookstore, and uh, we're really glad to be here, and glad to be part of this celebration of the month.
Welcome to the show. Thank you. So we're looking at some photographs right now, and uh, it's evident that you travel far and wide. I try to. It's uh, photography has become a passion of mine, so I love that it just opens up the world to me in a different way. Um, do you? Just basically keep your camera with you in any moment that would be vivid enough to uh, transfer this off that you have when you uh, capture your pictures. Or I, I do try to keep it close by. Um, sometimes I challenge myself too that I'm, if, if I find something I don't think is that I'm finding anything, I'll stop somewhere and not allow myself to leave until I take 10 pictures of something. And Thank sometimes you for I surprise myself. Sorry about that. I find. But how do you? prepare uh, the lens to uh, be able to take in those moments of rare beauty? Um, it depends on what I'm doing. Most of the time I just leave it on automatic. Um, but when I find something that I like I'll, that is actually sitting still, I'll play with as many different settings and as many different angles. I tend to take 50 pictures and different things. I end up with one picture that's wow and 49 that are like, eh, it's okay. So I delete the 49 and keep the one. And I grew up yeah. in uh, western yeah. Pennsylvania, um, so close that I could see Ohio in my backyard. So I'm not from here, but this is definitely feels like home here. Okay. And well, how long ago did you arrive in the Susquehanna Valley? Um, this January, it'll be six years. Okay. And you've been the administrator for the rehab services the entire time? I have. So, congratulations <laughs> coming up. Um, yeah, I, I am in no rush to leave. Um, I always tell them because we can get moved whenever they, they have a need for us to be moved. And because of people retiring and things that happens. But um, I, I jokingly but truly tell them that when moves come up, I hope my name drops off and Binghamton drops off the map and we're just magically reunited at the end of it. I love it here. That's one thing um, to have a career that has. Uh, episodes or incidents at an overall high amount of stress is to go out into the wild um, to sit there and observe long enough to uh, take in an abundance of radiance and the grace that God has willed for each of us uh, but for us to affirm that when we have our moments alone when we don't have obligations to others um, so, I'm glad that you do that. Thank you, I'm glad I do too. It, yes. it, I couldn't imagine um, doing that. For me, I love kayaking and I love taking pictures, so a lot of them are taken from uh, a The perspective kayak. in the water. Yes, which is why I like flat water, because I don't want to damage the camera for the rapids or anything. So, um, But no, I, it, it's... The stillness. It is. Three hours away is like three days away by the time I come back off the water. It's just that relaxing and that rejuvenating. We're one of the best kept secrets around, and I really hate that we're such a good secret. I want to get the word out. Um, we are a 24-7, uh, um, I mean, we, the center is for anybody that needs rehabilitation. If it's because um, of substance abuse, meaning drugs or alcohol, sometimes it's just a change in life. We had a gentleman who uh, lost his wife of, of 20 years and had no idea how to do life without her. His life was crumbling. So we were able to help him get back on track and get him another foot forward. Um, for some fellas, it's that they've been through prison and they're having trouble getting any kind of a, of a foot up and don't know what their next step is, and it's a safe place for them to be. Um, but for most people, there's absolutely no charge. If they have an income, then there is a room and board charge that um, fluctuates depending on how much money they have. But for most of the people, it, it costs them absolutely nothing. Um, the services that they do while they're learning um, maintains the, the money. And actually, if it weren't for the donors, we'd have nothing. Uh, all the work that we're able to do is only because of people donating their goods. And uh, so thank you to everybody who donates. And, and it makes, it changes lives. I mean, it literally, personally changes lives. And it's exciting to be a part of it.
working at age nine at the flower shop in town working nights just to survive this life was throwing her I graduated from, I, my senior year I transferred out of Mill Creek School and I went to Erie Tech and I studied mm -hmm. with Joe Falcon. I, oh. I took his summer art course, oh, okay. but there were nuns from Bill Maria and those really? nuns that, that would study with him in the summer. Oh, you know, we'd know go down on the waterfront and, yeah. and uh, paint and draw. Ah. And that's how I first got started. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And I had a piano teacher who suggested I, I take it. Mm. the art class because I used to make them the drawings yeah. and paintings for her. Amazing. You have to show up so. mm. And your husband is from Mary? No, he's from Brooklyn. And you're from Mary? I'm, I'm her brother. And yeah, I'm that's her Oh, sister. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, do you, when did you move? Oh, well, I, I went to Syracuse and... Mm. Uh, oh, that's supposedly a good art school. Yeah, it was. I got yeah. a scholarship. All, all of Joe Plofkin's students got scholarships. Is that right? Oh, he was such a wonderful teacher. Oh. He, was, he was amazing. And then I, uh, from there, I, after I graduated from Syracuse, I went to Iowa oh. and studied printmaking at the dance. Oh, good. And, uh, that's where I met Myron. And, mm. You know, I was there for several years, and then we got married. We moved to Plattsburgh, and, oh. and from Plattsburgh to to Bing, the Binghamton area oh, to Bristol. Uh, I I did my student teaching at uh, Academy High School, oh, sure. and then I decided I didn't want to teach. Oh, my brother was a teacher in in the area. Oh. Well, he taught in Clymer, which is just over the border in New York State. That's where all the, te the all the people that graduated from Mercyhurst went either over the border, Western New York, right. or Babylon or Long Island. <laughs> oh, that's, okay. Those were the two places that were eager to have students from my college. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so that's interesting. Yeah. But I thought it would be nice if we had some common ground, but of course, right. Erie is pretty you know, big. I, I, yeah. Um, but, you know, <laughs> probably we did know various people. What yeah. year, year did you graduate from high school? 56. Okay, that was the year I graduated from college. But, you know, we probably would have known Maybe. people. I mean, but, I, you know, Mill Creek was like... Well, yeah. The end of the world. And but I had a cousin, I mean, I had a cousin that lived in Erie. Lawrence uh, Park was the end of the world for you, you know. Yeah. Oh, you lived in Lawrence Park? For a oh, while. Yes, okay. Yeah. I, I studied violin with uh, Mr. Shokin, oh. Howard Shokin. Yeah. I don't know. He, he lived in Lawrence Park. I used to go there yeah. for, for my violin lessons. Ah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we at least covered the same ground. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, there was, a, there was a lot going on in art and music. I mean, they've got a really wonderful philharmonic there. Yeah. Eerie Philharmonic. Yeah. I didn't think there was too much there, but I couldn't afford things like that. So. I couldn't either, but my, my piano teacher gave me tickets to oh, the nice. philharmonic. Nice. I studied at the Eerie Dance Academy. Oh, you did? And because of that, I came to New York and I tried out for the Rockettes. Oh, really? When I was 19. And they said, mm -hmm, just the type, but you have to practice fan kicks and then come back. Russell Marker was the guy that founded them, so he was the guy that, you know, interviewed me. Mm -hmm. My claim to fame, not being able to make it to the Rockies. Didn't like the Rockies. So I went home and went to college. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to put all that on YouTube? <laughs> Is, is this, is, is this progress? 
I would say that we are progressing, but actually that there's a need to critique this, this age, this era of China. Okay. Establishing the key moments, um, bringing it to our awareness as a generation, as a culture, so that we can be getting to know if, the, if there is a semblance of progress and maturation of the soul in these individuals. Exactly, so that's, that's where the term rights comes in. It's referring to, I grew up Catholic, and it's referring to these sort of the rituals in which of one does for a child to be a girl. It's talking about, and it's sort of using, I'm often using um, a religious iconography, or using um, art history or art historical iconography in order to discuss um, these questions of how one uh, goes through the coming of age, how one goes from being a child to being an adult, um, specifically in this uh, sort of guy land period, if you will. This girl style. Amazing. Seeing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a rich like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind. Now I see Amazing grace How sweet The sound That saved The rich Like me But now